Hello there, and welcome back to the Sky Guys podcast here. Catch up on season two, episode 11 of The Bad Batch here. A rare good episode of this show, I might say. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Phillips. Normally, Peacock is here with us here, but he had to sit this one out. But with us here today is the former prime minister of the podcast, Nick Frey is here. Nick, how are you? Doing really good. As most people are aware, this episode came out the same day as The Mandalorian, so most of their focus is not on this episode, but it was really good. Yeah, it wasn't even Disney Plus's focus on this episode. I mean, you watch Mandalorian first, they even, they even send you here. They sent you to Andor. Yeah, my guess is that it's a different it's a di- different demographic they're looking for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but still, new Star Wars content is new Star Wars content. I agree, but they must not. Yeah, they must not here. And since Pete's not here, I'll mention at the top of the podcast here. If you like, if you like to hear on these on the Sky Guys podcast, feel free to subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon, all the suspects. Not only do you get all these fun bad bit episodes, if you're a fan of us on the Just on the Suffering podcast, I don't know how you found it without the uh B, but you get the man episodes early here as opposed to over on Scott on Just on the Suffering. That's right. You gotta get you gotta all you gotta it's as Pete says, get your click away. If you haven't done it by now, what are you doing? Yeah, if you have not done it now, I don't know what you're doing here. You can also follow us on social media, Nick. How can they do that? At Sky Guys Podcast on both Instagram and on Twitter. Absolutely here. You can also follow me on YouTube. Mike Phillips on YouTube. Video version of the podcast is up on YouTube here. And normally we do, normally we do the news on Bad Bats, but we did on Mandalorian. So like, no need to do it again, Nick. Yeah, no need to do it again. There's some news there. You can check it out in the Mandalorian episode, which if you go to the page, you'll, you'll see all, all listed in chronological order, so you'll be able to find it easily. Yep, absolutely. So let's get to this episode here. We have uh, Metamorphosis is our episode today. So I got to say, Nick, I was pleasantly surprised by what we got today. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, it was. It made my choice better because I saw. I told you off the air. I said like I decided to watch this one first today. I said you know like this is always like the th- be with the kid. Like, like I want to eat the vegetables before I have to get eat all the good stuff. So you I got, did, and I I called you crazy. I said to Mike, I said let me know when you watch um, Mando. You said I'm watching Bad Batch, and I was like, we waited two and a half years, and you're <laughs> watching the other one. Yeah. I guess yeah, that's what you did. It paid off. Yeah. Yeah, it paid off with a good episode here. I did enjoy this one here. And like I for once like the parody ripoffs they did here, like when they had like the aliens parody in the intro. I I thought that actually worked for once. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. It's really exciting, really well shot visually, and like the fact they didn't actually show you what got like killed that four storm trooper that poor clone trooper, a lot of fun. Yeah, it really was. It was it was it just seemed like a different show. Did you ever notice that? This show was like... Bipolar. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't know how what the percent is, but a good, like, I don't know, 70% of the episodes are the same, the same, the same, and then all of a sudden there's these episodes randomly that come out of nowhere. And you can tell. I don't know about you. I can tell. The opening scene, and the next shot, like the way the music was, they go, oh, it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like you could tell right away. And I was like, oh, it's a good one. They decided to try this time. Yeah. And, I have a question for you because you're more of the the background in this kind of, you know, film and whatnot. And like, you know, like movie, TV and like media, I guess. So shows that are on television, on like network television. So for example, um Smallville was on was on network television, right? Yes, it was. And Smallville had twenty two episode seasons because the network demands that out of them, right? Yeah, that, that was the standard back in the day. And from, right, and usually those network yeah. television shows are still mostly the same. They start around Labor Day, they end on Memorial Day, right? Yeah, with like repeat sprinkled in there, yes. Yeah, so my question is, they don't have the same with streaming platforms, right? Like Disney Plus doesn't demand a certain amount of episodes out of the pit, or maybe they, do, maybe they do, but not nearly as much, right? Yeah, you would say so. So why do they have these episodes that suck? Like not this week, but other ones. I don't know. That's a good question. Because, like, because it makes sense in shows like Smallville or The Flash or whatever, because they, they have to hit a 22 mark se- a 22 episode season. So we can only come up with 15, let's say. Seven of them are just going to be terrible. Well, nothing we can do about it. Yeah, that I don't get, especially with these cartoon like shows here. I mean, I figure, oh, like, it's cheap to make. Let's get more content in there. But like when your story is so wildly disparate, like with this one compared to what we had the last like two weeks or the uh, – the uh, episode where they're in treasure hunting, like it just feels like two different shows. It really does, but you know what? Glad we got the good one this time. 
Yeah, I'm glad we got the good ones. I've got a 33% hit clip if we're getting a good episode or a bad, not, or a bad one this show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we do see the alien intro. It's a lot of fun here. We do see that the Empire is doing experiments on this planet called, I think it was it Tantus they called this planet? Yes. Yeah, so they're, I was on Tantus. found out that Nala Say is there after they arrested her at the end of the last season. They've been keeping her here, and she's refusing to help them with their cloning projects. Yeah, it makes sense. They, they took her, you know. They, they uh, yeah, they, as simple as that. They, uh, they did that because they're obviously we know that these shows, mostly Mandalorian and this and whatnot, are there because like the, the big thing behind them is they're trying to make the sequels make sense. So, as long as the way to do it. Yeah, I have to say too, I like the new uh, Empire guy, Doctor Hemlock is his name. I feel like that's a great villain name. Yep. He, he, do you know the voice? Uh, I can look it up. You don't. I mean, my question was if you like knew it, so you don't. I do not know it now. Because it sounded really familiar. Yeah, I'll try and look that up real quick. But like Doctor Hemlock, I think is a lot of fun where he's trying to coerce uh, Nala Say to like help him out, and she's like, "Why would I help you? You bombed my planet to submission, pretty much." Yes, um, <clears throat> I can see why <laughs> she wouldn't want to help. But at the same time, I know the voice, by the way. I figured it out. Um, but it, you don't really have a choice when it comes to the uh, the Empire. You know what I mean? But the voice is actually, his name is uh, Jimmy Simpson, and he plays a character in Always Sunny in Philadelphia, if you've seen. Oh, for, I, know, I, know, I know Jimmy Simpson. He's from, he, he played uh, Younger and he was William. in House of Cards. Yeah, Younger William in Westworld, too, famously. Yeah. And yeah, he's he plays if, if people are always Sunny fans, he plays um he plays um the one McPoyle brothers, Liam McPoyle. So that's probably where that's where I know him. But the voice just it just rang a bell to me. But yeah, I'm very yeah, I guess but the, the whole point is when you you say no to the Empire, like, oh good job, you said no, you're standing up, but you're you're it's not gonna work. You're gonna end up doing it anyway. Yeah, I'm very excited to have Jimmy Simpson in the mix here for this show because he's a very talented actor. But, but anyway, we'll go forward here in the storyline here. We do see that, Nick, we get a little bit of fallout from last week where the Bad Batch are on the hollow with Sid, and she's trying to, you know, like, say, hey, you know, good job, guys. You got your ship back and all of this stuff. And they're, like, they're clearly pissed. They're, like, no thanks to you. And then, like, they sort of hold out because she wants to go on a mission to go retrieve, uh, like, treasure from the shuttle that crashed at the beginning of the episode. And they basically find out, Nick, that she only, char- she only gives them 30% of the cut. Yeah, thirty percent of the cut on these missions doesn't that seem ridiculous? They're the ones doing it. Yeah, it's, it does seem pretty crazy. Like, they're doing all the work, and like Sid, I guess she's supplying. She's giving them like free watch and food, and food uh, and intel. But like, I mean, I feel like that'd be closer to fifty fifty than doing the light work. Yeah, I would have thought so too, but guess not. Yeah, and we do get a little bit of hesitation. You see here that Hunter basically like refuses to like like bargain. She she goes out to fifty fifty because like they basically put her in the corner about that. And I did think it was interesting here where, like, she can tell that Hunter's pissed at him. And, and like, she had basically says, like, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, she, what did she call She called him Headband, right? Yep. Yeah, she sucks. And most of the Bad Batch sucks as well. Not yep. all of them, but most of them suck. I, I, I realized this episode that I've been always giving Omega the benefit of the doubt because it's the ca- kind of character that we've seen a lot in Star Wars. We've seen... Ezra and Ahsoka and these characters sucked at the beginning, but they grew on us, right? Yep. And I'm like, all right, we're halfway through season two, and she still sucks. So I'm on Team Omega sucks now. <laughs> and that scene just kind of like I don't know the way she was arguing with Sid. It just, it's just very childish. Yeah, I think the one thing I'll take away from this is after they hang up the transmission here, that Hunter clearly has decided he's done with Sid and he wants to move on from Sid. And Tex says like. We can't break from her cleanly because she knows information about us is compromising here. So, like, what the hell does she know that, like, they can't just break up with her cleanly? I'm not sure, but I do like how they basically said, let's just do this one last mission for her. Take the 50% and then leave, you know? Yeah, and one That's thing what I, I would do. Yeah, the one thing I noticed here with these guys, too, is, like, they're not very successful in any of their missions. What do you mean? Like, the Bad Batch? Yeah, the Bad Batch don't usually accomplish what they're sent out to do by Sid. No, no, they usually like survive and come up and come away with a piece of it, but they usually don't finish the mission fully. Yeah. Well, they definitely they, they they don't usually survive. They always survive, or else they're dead. But 
they don't they don't usually accomplish the goal while they're out there. They're usually, right? It's usually I've seen them like on these treasures you can actually come back with treasure once. True. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, so anyway, this is a lot of fun here. We do see that they go back to take care of this and we go see them exploring the ships, a lot of fun. And Nick, we find out real quick that like first of all, I love the vibes of them like creeping around the ship in the dark while tech's trying to fix the lights. Like that was a lot of fun. It's gonna give you more alien vibes. Yep. It reminded me of Alien a lot, and it, was, I, it wasn't, you know, freaky or anything. It wasn't scary or anything, but that, but it put you in the moment where you were kind of freak, creeped out. Yeah, you were creeped out here. And then we find out that this creature that they are transporting that ate the uh, oh, ate the entire clone crew that was on that ship, Nick, it's a Zillow beast. A little callback to the Clone Wars. They actually call it back in the show, too. I think it was Tech says it to Hunter. Yeah, Tech finds the mission log at the end of at the end of the, at the episode. He says it, it attacked Coruscant during the Clone Wars. Yes, that was a famous two episode arc on like of season. I think it was a season two. This happened in or season three. Was Zero the hut in that? I don't think so. Good. Yeah. But yeah, I remember the whole thing with Zello Beast and this and that. It just shows that the Empire is more invested in cloning right now. Yes, it shows that that's something that about the Empire we never knew throughout the movies or any of the other shows or anything is how heavily involved they were in cloning. And now we're finding that out. Yes. I remember they also mentioned here that like uh, in this episode, I think tech is mentioned it, but like this, like the Zillow beast like, was like a, I believe it was an extinct mythical creature has like very like, like, like a, it's, it's a uh, skin has like armor, like plating that can like be weaponized if used correctly. So Palpatine ordered it to be cloned after the uh, Jedi killed it in uh, the second season. So like, it's in they got that direct callback to Palpatine used to take cloning or the Zillow Beast be cloned. That's right. And um I just changed my audio. I don't know if you could tell. Yeah, I did. I can. Uh, I, I it wasn't using the mic. Now I am, but that's good. Um the whole Zillow Beast thing coming back to me, I just mentioned it, but it screams a sequel to me. And I think that's really what they're doing with this show as well. They're trying to make the sequels more credible. And if you introduce cloning early enough in the timeline, it shows that. This was the plan all along, so that somehow Palpatine return line makes more sense as we go on and on and on. Horrible writing, horrible line, but now it makes sense. What do you think of what the, of how the uh, Kaminoans did with the Zillow Beast enhances? Because now the, the uh, Zillow Beast basically it feasts on energy, and like it does, it's effective. It's like Omega's like energy weapons don't work against it. It can't. It can still repel all the gunfire here. So like this thing is like mad dangerous. Yeah, I'm not sure what they did, but whatever they did, it must have been at the Order of the Empire. Maybe even not the Order of the Empire. I don't know. I would assume it was. But it makes for a very scary future to think what else you could clone and add power to it. I guess like a Sith, maybe. Yeah, certainly look at that possibility here. We do see, get the sequence here where I think the the Zobis is chasing them. They get a corner in the thing. Tech throws a bomb and like into the engine well to basically create a hole in the ship and they have to go Sort of like realize the hunter says, "Hey, you know, like we let this beast out. It's going to attack the village. We have to try and help the village, and they're not successful this either because they can't stop the thing. It ends up being the empire that saves the day, who saves the villagers." Yeah, that is true. Um, I, I'm a little worried as to what this means for the rest of the galaxy. Although we already know, <laughs> yeah. I'm a little worried about what it means for the rest of the galaxy. If I'm if I'm living in this time, I'm like, oh. This could be bad. It could be bad for those poor civilians of that area who, like, the Empire basically round, round up all the witnesses and said, okay, like, we're, like, you, like, you saw too much. You can't be, you can't be allowed to see, to speak about what you saw today. Yes, yes, that's plain and simple dictatorship. Nothing you can, nothing positive to say about that. Yeah, all those people are getting disappeared and we're never going to see them again. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. It is terrible here, and we do see also that the Empire is still working with that Zillow Beast. They use a sonic weapon to like, uh, to, like stop from King Kong a power plant. They capture it, put it in some kind of like, amp, like liquid suspended animation. They're still working on experiments here, and this is when we get to the end where Tech is talking about like what's going on here, and Tech finds the information in the logs about going back to the Republic era, Palpatine ordering that this thing be cloned. Yeah, I mean, nothing to add. Yeah, 
that's I think to, I've said it a hundred times. I'll say it again. They're making the sequels make sense. There's nothing else I can say. Yep. And then we see at the end of the episode that Doctor Hemlock is back, and we we find out that like they order that they bring they bring Lama Sue to this planet. The former Prime Minister Camino, who was in prison at the end of season one, and basically he's like, hey, like you know Nala say, why isn't she helping us? He's like. The only way you can compel her is to look for a certain like, uh, female clone she could attach to, namely Omega. And he basically says, like, I help you find her, I get released. And then they make a deal. That's the end of the episode. Yeah, that tells us what the end of the season is going to be about, right? Yeah, this is the episode. I feel like it's going to be the, thru- the the starting thrust for the end of the season here. I mean, I don't know. because They still have a couple plot lines here. We've only seen Crosshair once. Cody, all that stuff. What's going on with Sid? And now how many episodes do we have? Two, three, Five. four? Five episodes to wrap all those things up. It seems like every, it seems like every time we get towards the end of a season, excuse me, it seems like every time we get towards the end of a season in a Star Wars show, we say the same thing. How are they going to wrap it up in this many episodes? There's still so much to cover, and they usually don't. <laughs> and we you, usually are upset by the finales. You even mentioned Echo and Rex, who you know we're going to see again too. Yeah, that's right. I would imagine they're going to be helping them with that part, though. Yeah, because, I mean, Tech even says, let's send our data over to Echo and Rex. Because I feel like these, actually, now that I think about it, you can throw Crosshair in that mix and make him a part of that same storyline. Yeah. And Cody. Yeah, but we still need to check in on Crosshair. I haven't seen Crosshair since episode three. Yeah, but all those things could be combined into, like, a singular story, except for Sid. Yeah. Well, I think I said, I, I, my theory is that in three weeks we're going to be done with Sid for good. I feel like a break, like tipping point in episode four. Yeah, you don't need five episodes of build up to this finale. You could do two or three that are involve Sid and then another two or three for the for the last storyline. So I think I think they could wrap it up nicely, actually. Just just please, no more filler. I don't think you, I think you have time for one more filler total. I mean, like, if we're counting filler, is like, like, I don't want it. I don't want filler, but I think you can do one more filler and survive. I think I know where the filler is going to be, too. I have a sense about that, but, like, I feel like I do much matter not have that. Yeah, I don't think... I, yeah, I, hopefully we don't. All right. Let's go out here. Let's go to our trackers here. Keep track of the stuff we do every week here on the uh, Bad Batch podcast here. So, Nick, no Hondo once again, 18 points. Well, we discussed in the Scott and the uh, Mandalorian podcast why they're still teasing us about Hondo. We'll get him. Yeah. This is getting ridiculous, I will say that. We'll get him. I know we will. Yep. Uh, we added a live action cameo to the board because Lama Sue de- uh, debuted in Attack of the Clones. So this is up to 10 now. What about the other guy? Uh, now let's oh. say a Clone Wars original. Are you sure? I, I, I double checked on the, on uh, Wikipedia. Don't you remember them meeting the Prime Obi Wan meeting the Prime Minister? Yeah, that's Lama Sue. Oh, who's the guy? Yeah, the guy is the, is the one from the movie. Oh, all right. The other one from the movie they killed off in season one. Okay. There were two in the movie, you mean? Yeah. Uh, Lava Sue, and then the, it was the Prime Minister, and then the, I think the Torn Way is the one they kill off in, in season one. Hmm. Okay. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. All right. Next up here, we did a plan. Here's our first trip to Tantus, so 11 planets on the season, Nick. We're going to miss that number, but we're going to get damn close. This is also technically a Sid mission because we did Sid did send them to retrieve the loot from the ship, so they were unsuccessful. But it's a six Sid mission, although it's probably the most impactful Sid mission of the entire season. I'm gonna actually, I would love to. I don't know, you're not getting me to do this to go back and watch season one, but I'd like to know how many Sid missions total have there been in the show, and how many have actually been complete. Yeah, that's something I'm not going back to do that homework. I. I'm willing to say, let's say there's six this season. I'm willing to say there's about seven last season. I put this at thirteen, right? Yeah, I'll say about. I'm right. willing. I'm willing to bet maybe three. They finished. No, I mean I know for sure they finished dropping off the weapons to uh to to uh the Sindulas. That's only one. Yeah, I think they rescued the clone, the uh, separated center. I think they're more successful last season than they were this season. Well, I guess this season's less about those missions and more about empire cloning. Last not least here, the clone tracker here. We added one because the main guy is named Scorch. So we have a named clone to add to the board, Nick. Great. Yeah. What's that tracker right now? Eight. Awesome. Eight named clones. The same mechanic as, as Mandalorian, where it's doing named Mandalorians. 
as opposed to like trying to identify every single man who on the screen. Here's the same thing with the clones. All right. All right. Next up, you'll go to our MVP LVP board. We're going to discuss the best and the worst here. P is not guy has to check out the episode as recording time. He's going to submit his stuff next week. So he will let us know next week what's going on with this. But here's where the board stands after 10 episodes of the season. The top of the board here tied between Cody and Tech at plus three. Plus twos, Gungi, Palpatine, and Nick, your favorite, Benny the Thief. Plus ones, Echo, Romar, and Nick. We're still on the board in the positives. Who? Oh, us. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, the Sky Guys, plus one. Yeah, look at us. Yep. We are better than most of the cast of the show. That's... Yeah. yeah. And zeros, Wrecker, Senator Chuchi, and Omega. Negative ones, a big pile of them. Hunter, Crosshair, Governor Groton, Tony Ames, Disney, Venomore, and Mako from last week. Vice Admiral Rampart is negative three, and Sid is negative five, bringing up the rear here. So, uh, Nick, you can start us off here. Who is the MVP of the week? I'm going to take Dr. Hemlock. I think he made a great impression and made himself a very serviceable villain for the end of the season, and hopefully that's the route they go with. And awesome job. I think a lot of shows suffer, a lot of movies suffer from not establishing a villain well, and I think that's could be the opposite of the case right here if he turns out to be the main villain. I'm giving Tech the points. I feel like he, his technical know-how is very important. He did cover important information about the Zillow Beast that he did pass on to Echo and Rex. I'm giving Tech another point. All right, good for Tech. Yeah, Tech is probably, I think, the most val- he's clearly the most valuable member of his team so far. Yeah. yeah. All right. Pete's will get, get to next week. LVP's here. I'm going to start out here. I'm going to have some fun with this one. I'm going to give this to the Empire for not being able to transport their Zillow Beast correctly. And I think that they got very bailed out. The Bad Batch interfered with this and got the Beast out so they could capture it again. So you and the Empire, the LVP. Um, I'm giving it to Omega. But there's not really a specific reason. Just because I realized I don't like her. And now I feel like we need to get her down that list. Yeah. You want to push her? She's, you're pushing her to the negatives. I am because because I realized it. Just like I said, I, I'm waiting for this character to turn it around and be like, okay, now she's a great character. Ahsoka sucked in season one, but Ahsoka's great. When is it going to happen? Yeah. I don't know. Good question. That's for sure. Yeah, I will make a prediction here for next week. Pizza, give his to Sid. <laughs> well, Sid sucks. So. Because Sid also puts them in harm's way in this episode. On purpose, though, probably. Yeah, I assume so. So, I was, I'm assuming six could be negative six next week. We'll confirm. What her. does she have against them, though? I don't. I think she's pissed off at them for like, like because like if they if they just do these missions and just make her money, like then why would they be mad? Well, I mean, she's not. I like, guess like like I said, we talked about earlier. They're not very successful, and like, oh, she, yeah, that could be it. I mean, they they suck, and that's why she doesn't like them. They're like she's 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 basically like but like eat, they're eating eating her out of house at home, and like she's not getting any return on this investment, in her opinion. All right, so next up here, we do the grades, the episodes, on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 is up there with the 19, down the United City Holiday Festival, the worst piece of Star Wars entertainment of all time. 10 is up with the prison episode of Andor in terms of the greatness of this show. So, Nick, give me a grade for this episode. So, I want to make it uh, very clear before I give my number here. That when I give an episode a 10 or a 1, I mean for that show. When I give an episode of The Bad Batch a 10... And an episode of Mando a six. I probably still like that six Mando episode more than I like the ten. Just even though it's lower, it's just I'm grading it on a different scale. Yeah. But that being said, though, I'm giving this episode an eight. You're an eight. I think I think it was a really good episode. I don't really have any any flaws with it or anything. It was really exciting and one of the good episodes of the Bad Batch. Yeah, I'm giving it a seven here because I felt like I was thoroughly entertained by this one. We set some good plot points up, a good villain, Doctor Hamlock. I feel like we did some good work this week. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm upset that Pete didn't get to didn't get to um, be involved in this because I know you know he'd been not loving the show to say the least, and this is something that he would have been happy about. Well, next week he'll let us know what he thought of this episode. Yeah, yeah, it's not like he's not like he's not coming back. Pete will be with us. Pete was with us on the Mandalorian podcast that you guys have heard, and he'll be back with us again for both Mando and Bad Batch for next week. Yeah, speaking of next week here, our episode next week is called The Outpost. So my guess is here. We've been teased in this mid-season interview by D. Bradley Baker. We have a crosshair heavy episode here. I think there's an outpost where crosshair has been stationed to if something happens that sort of changed the respect. That's my guess. It's about time. And speaking of D. Bradley Baker, 
I don't know what character he played, but he. I just watched an episode of Family Guy last night. It was a new one. It's trying to fall. I like to watch that when I go to sleep, just because yeah. it's you know mindless stuff. And he was in there. It's. I saw him in the in the credits, but I don't know who he played. Well, it's good for Deep Bradley Baker. Yeah, you get some Family Guy stuff. Must have been fun. I don't know how you probably just go for a day or two and you're done. Actually, he's been doing Family Guy for a long time, so I don't know what he what 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 he played, but. Seems like voice acting. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's that daunting of a task, especially if you're a side character. Yeah, for sure. Here, and we're also going back next week. Well, the next time you hear from us on the podcast, here is you're going to hear chapter 18 of the Mandalorian coverage. It might be a day late because we're after record on Thursday next week. Out of respect to the fact that Nick's going to be a good husband and make sure he's there for his wife's birthday, so we're going to make sure that we we'll get it out to you like as, as early, as possibly late Thursday, more likely early Friday morning for chapter 18 of, the, of uh, Mandalorian. Yes, that is that is true. I am a great husband. Yep, we are making sure Nick is Nick, Nick protects his marriage here. That's right. All right, so that's all here, Nick. I want to thank you for the time. Really appreciate. It. People want to follow us on on the social media streets. How can I do that? At Sky Guys Podcast. Sounds good. You can also follow me on Twitter and Phillips three three one. It's M P H I L I P S three three one. This week on the Justin the Suffering Podcast, we did, we had some fun. We did an NBA crossover so with the guys from Sorry Interrupt Podcast. Talk some NBA hoops. Most of the Rocky movie rankings, and Nick, your rankings caused quite a stir in this podcast. Yeah, I, I I rank the Rocky movies the way I rank the Star Wars movies. I'm not ranking it based on what's the best movie. That's not fun. You can just sort it by best to worst on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. You don't need a podcast for that. You got to base it on what you enjoy the most. Yeah, well, you definitely shook it up. I will say that. People want to check out. Nick was not on the podcast. His ratings were included in the panel with his brother and a guest of the Sky Guys, Mike McGon. Yeah, I, I I talked to my brother about it, and he was like, oh, how do you put that one high? I'm like, because I'm not ranking it what's the best movie. I could just sort from good to bad on the Wikipedia page and do it that way. That's no fun. Yeah, that is no fun. That's it for us this week. We'll be back next week on The Bad Batch. I have recap coverage here back next weekend. But until then, may the force be with you.